What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the most comprehensive weekly NFL player review series on the internet, my Studs and Duds series. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Studs and Duds from NFL Week 5, whose stock is rising and whose stock is falling. While we do that, I'll be going through this week's update for my own custom Madden roster. Yes, it is a video game, uh, but they are my own ratings and it makes for a very convenient way for me to share my perceptions of these players and how my opinions on these guys is changing. So buckle up, we're gonna go game by game. I do ask though, please do take a second to hit that like button down below. This was uh, a shortened week. This video is not coming up till Saturday, so I don't expect it to do all that well. So if you guys can please hit that like button to help share the video, tell your friends and family as well who you think would enjoy. I really appreciate it. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it, starting with the star of the week. And that is really not going to be a surprise. He's been all the rage. Rookie wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Chase Claypool. Second round pick out of Notre Dame. Some people thought he would convert to tight end. I even bought into that narrative at close to 240 pounds. But nope, he is definitely a wide receiver and a damn good one at that. Boy, do the Pittsburgh Steelers have an eye for this. Uh, he's even drawing plenty of comparisons to Megatron, Calvin Johnson. Uh, the nickname Mapletron is just amazing as a Canadian native. I, I love that nickname. But anyway, he is making an impact on all three levels of the field. They'll get him the ball in short stuff, jet sweeps. Uh, he can make an impact in the screen game. He can run a crosser and dominate and run away from a uh, defender over the middle of the field. Or he can step outside and be a vertical threat on the outside. Really impressing. <laughs> really a <laughs> disgrace for, uh, to Notre Dame for not using this guy to his best abilities because, man, I feel like we missed out on what could have been an elite college career from this guy and someone that, frankly, looks like he belonged in the top 10 from the get-go. You know, Ian Book and those guys just seemingly couldn't get what the Pittsburgh Steelers have out of him, but he looks just incredible on a hot track uh, to becoming one of the many star receivers in the NFL. And then the dud of the week, we're going to stay within the same game, within the same state, and at the same type of skill position, and it's going to be Zach Ertz for the Philadelphia Eagles going down 4, 87 to an 83. Seems to have lost some of his foot speed. He's not getting open. He's certainly not winning any contested catches. They're trying to get him the ball. He's just not coming down with it and just not getting open, not creating after the catch. When he does catch the ball, he's never been a good run blocker. It's showing even more now that he's not making an impact in the receiving game. Ertz on the last year of his contract, he wanted to get paid with the top tight ends in the league, and he is not doing a good job making a case for that contract. So Zach Ertz, the dud of the week, not helping things in Philadelphia where uh, the season has not been what they certainly desired. All right, so starting off with the first game here, Carolina at Atlanta, Taylor Moten emerging as one of the top tackles in the league, yeah, just a stud there contributing to what has been a surprisingly good offense this year and uh, he is in the final year of his contract I would not be surprised if he gets a contract pushing 20 million dollars yearly close to what Laramie Tunsil got uh, doesn't quite have the leverage that Tunsil had after getting traded for a couple first round picks but regardless Moten has been incredible uh, and then Mike Davis the running back stepping in for Christian McCaffrey he's been outstanding uh, he is breaking tackles. He is doing exactly what they asked Christian McCaffrey to do as that true three down back, running between the tackles, getting the outside, creating explosive plays as a runner, but more importantly, contributing in the receiving game. He has been a focal point of this offense just as Christian McCaffrey is. So uh, congrats to Mike Davis on an excellent season. And then we have Robbie Anderson. They are getting the most out of him as a do-it-all outside receiver, making plays down the sideline. He's been much more sharp on short routes, intermediate routes, comebacks, that kind of stuff. You know, the Jets basically just used him as a deep threat, and the Panthers are getting him much more involved, and he looks outstanding. And then flipping over to the defensive side of the ball that's been uh, really promising for such a young unit that was expected to be one of the worst in the league. They've been an average unit uh, on the defensive side of the ball. So Brian Burns, the first round pick from last year, is starting to reach his potential. He's really doing a good job getting after the quarterback, showing that burst and bend and ability to leverage uh, that bend around the edge this year. So he's going to go up one in the nickel. Corn Elder, he's been in and around this team on the practice squad back and forth, but he has 
earned the starting job in the nickel. He was good at it coming out uh, and looks pretty good there. I don't know if he's the long-term answer in the, um, in the nickel there, but uh, certainly a starting caliber nickel corner, uh, tackling well doing good stuff in the short to intermediate game. Then you have F.A. Obata, a rotational, big-bodied edge player uh, that will come in, play some three-tech, some four-tech. He's been contributing as a pass rusher as well. Marquise Haynes, same story there. These guys are both rotating in and making an impact as a rusher at a, you know, low level for a rotational guy, but uh, worth a note. And then Jeremy Chin going up. He flies to the ball. He's a good tackler. He's had his lapses in coverage. Uh, certainly something he is going to have to adapt to if he wants to be the high-end versatile safety that he has the potential to be, uh, but certainly looks the part out there for the second round pick out of, uh, what was it, Southern Illinois. Uh, definitely a freak athlete looking pretty good in this scheme. And then for the Atlanta Falcons, um, Todd Gurley, Brian Hill, both these guys going up. Todd Gurley, I think, you know, we lowered him early because he just does not have the same burst. And that certainly still applies. But I think that Todd Gurley, uh, being the, the heavy work ethic kind of guy that he is, is realizing that he can't necessarily win in the same ways that he did before. But he can still be a powerful runner. He can be patient and show good vision. He can break arm tackles. Uh, and he is definitely bouncing back from what looked like a miserable start to his Falcons career. Um, but good for Todd Gurley, kind of finding new ways to contribute as a running back is, is more of a, you know, I don't want to call him a power back, but more of that sort of sturdy bruising style a little bit more as, as opposed to that, you know, give me a lane and let me hit it and get a 40 yard run where I go untouched like he used to do a lot with the Rams. A little bit different here with Atlanta, uh, but certainly worth noting. And Brian Hill has done a good job as well, showing some um, power compliment to Todd Gurley. And then uh, Caleb uh, Caleb McGarry, Chris Lindstrom, the pair of first round picks for the Falcons last year. If you want a consolation prize for the 0-5 Falcons this year, it is that those offensive linemen are starting to develop there on the right side of that line. Hopefully can give this team something to build around there, uh, which they were hoping were going to make a more immediate impact. It just hasn't happened, but uh, they're starting to play well. And then on the defensive side, we've got some players going down here. Keanu Neal just, uh, you know, he's he's basically fallen off any sort of hype realm here. He's really a liability in coverage. You know, he'll still come up and, you know, hit you in the mouth and be that guy that has those highlight hits and stuff. But you know, more of an exciting guy, a better player to have in Madden per se uh, than any sort of practical cover player in the NFL. Just doesn't have those instincts, doesn't have the lateral movement skills. And then Tyler Davison, he's been a consistent run defender for several years now, but really struggling here in Atlanta. Uh, and then just some notes here, Hayden Hurst has been disappointing the last few weeks, could be due for a decrease. And Alex Mack, the veteran center there, uh, is certainly not playing up to his standards. Uh, he is certainly up there in age and could be due for a decrease in the future. Uh, then we have the Bengals-Ravens game. So for the Bengals, no surprise here, A.J. Green was close to the dud of the week. Uh, just looks like a shell of himself. It's pretty self-explanatory. He's not getting open. He's not coming down with contested catches. He's offering very little. Uh, after the catch, just not looking like a good receiver. And I think Cincinnati very much is going to try to phase him out. Now, I don't want to count him entirely out. He is one of the best receivers of the decade for sure. Uh, it's hard to say that his physical traits have just completely disappeared, though it looks. So I wouldn't be stunned if he turned this thing around, but it's not looking good right now. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, the secondary uh, stepping up. By the way, T. Higgins is stepping up in A.J. Green's shoes so at least there's that he could be due for a boost but yeah on the defensive side free safety jesse bates uh, we're big jesse bates fans on this channel glad to see him succeeding i really do believe that if this defense could round out and give him more opportunities uh, to really be instinctive and you know make more breaks on the ball and, and force more mistakes from quarterbacks with a better pass rush. I do think Jesse Bates could be one of the best free safeties in the NFL, but without that, he is still playing at a very high level this year. Really a big fan of Jesse Bates and uh, glad to see him uh, roaming around the, the center of the defense this year. And he's even coming down in the box and manning up Mark Andrews, showing that he is just a top end safety. 
And then William Jackson is having a good year as well in a contract year. Uh, He has had a couple of quiet seasons after really breaking out as a young player. Uh, So a contract year, uh, potentially a guy that's going to get a hefty bag of money in the offseason. And then for the Ravens, uh, offensive lineman Patrick McCarry. This is a big sign of optimism for the Ravens. That right guard spot has been a disaster, quite frankly, with rookie Tyree Phillips not being able to plug in there. Uh, They uh, missed Phillips this game, I believe, for injury. And Patrick McCarry, the backup center who played well last year, steps into right guard and gave them uh, the closest thing to Marshall Yanda that they have been trying to find since he retired. And I would be very surprised if he does not resume uh, moving forward at that right guard spot. Uh, And then just a note on Lamar Jackson has not been particularly sharp after we increased him in the first couple weeks. Uh, Certainly someone that we're going to keep an eye on uh, him as a passer and what we do with that rating moving forward. Then on the defensive side of the ball, Patrick Queen takes home defensive player of the week. I said he wasn't playing well last week and uh, yeah, he made me look dumb for that one. Patrick Queen, the first round pick. Uh, I thought this was an excellent pick from the get-go and he certainly had uh, his rise to uh, what I believe is going to be a very nice career for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, so plus two for Patrick Queen and then Deshaun Elliott stepping into Earl Thomas's shoes at that free safety spot. Uh, you know, not Earl Thomas or anything, but he has uh, been certainly serviceable there. So he's going to go up. And then Jalen Ferguson almost went up this week. He is a rotational edge player for this defense. Uh, doing really well in run defense uh, and making small impacts as a pass rusher as well. Frankly, if they weren't playing the Bengals offensive line, he probably would have gone up. So someone to monitor moving forward. Uh, Next game, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Houston Texans. For the Jags, it's just going to be movement on the defensive side of the ball. LaVisca Chenault was really good again this week. I like LaVisca. He's been going up a a couple weeks, so no boost this week, but LaVisca continues to play well. Um, But defensively, a couple of low-level starters uh, stepping up. Sidney Jones, this is looking like a great find, a really talented player. We, we talked about him a little bit last week. He comes out, gets a pick this week, uh, was basically the only one in the secondary that wanted to show up this week. I am kind of buying into the Sidney Jones redemption comeback this this on this team this year. And uh, if they can get C.J. Henderson back, I like that duo quite a bit of Sidney Jones and C.J. Henderson. That is a high upside duo of young players. Uh, and then Dewan Smoot, uh, we have, or Dwayne Smoot, we've hinted at him as well. He's been not getting a ton of reps, but he is really stepping up, getting more and more playing time. Again, a guy in a contract year. He's been buried behind, uh, really since he's been here, a deep group of edge players, and it's no different this year either, but uh, he is forcing his way onto the field. He has uh, certainly earned those reps through what he's shown as that big-bodied early down run defender on the edge, kind of replacing Calais Campbell, Uh, but in turn, he's showing that he can rush the passer as well. He's a toolsy guy. He's got a good get-off. He's got some power. He's uh, got some uh, pass rush moves to his uh, belt, so I, I do like his game and frankly he has been every bit as good as as um Caleb on chess on I think Josh Allen has been out honestly I haven't even noticed him if he's been on the field Uh, so Dwayne Smoot's been one of the better edge players certainly a guy that uh, could be getting some looks somewhere else in free agency this year Uh, and then Gerard Wilson is playing well at safety for the Jags as well he's a bit of an unsung hero for this defense but he is a a good versatile big-bodied safety uh, that has done well here and he had to step down into the box this week. He's played a lot of free safety, but he's he's like 6'2", 215. He is a big physical safety, even though they play him mostly at that center fielding role uh, in this Jags style de- of this uh, Seattle three style defense. But Josh Jones got ejected this week and they, they plugged uh, Wilson down in the box and he looked good. So he could be due for a boost in the future. And then on the Texan side of the ball, Brandon Cooks is going to go back up after we reduced him last week. He definitely turned that thing around, showed uh, flashes of his old self. He frankly had one of the best games of his career. He was coming down with a couple of really impressive contested catches. Deshaun Watson showing some of that faith and trust in Brandon Cooks. And if they can get Cooks going, they got Fuller going, Kenny Stills. This is a speedy receiving core that I honestly think has a decent amount of upside moving forward that really showed out this week. 
And then you have Laramie Tunsil. He is having his best season as a left tackle. Honestly, I was critical of this trade because I didn't think Laramie Tunsil was the caliber of left tackle being, you know, an elite top five type of tackle that you would need to be to trade two first rounders and a second rounder to get Laramie Tunsil. And this year he's playing like that. And honestly, if this is who he is, if he is going to stabilize himself as a David Bakhtiari, Ronnie Stanley, Tyron Smith, Trent Williams caliber tackle, which his upside definitely indicates it can be, he's a great athlete, then honestly, that trade is not that bad of a deal uh, for Bill O'Brien, who is now gone. Uh, But yeah, Laramie Tunsil on the rise. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Eric Murray continues to play well in more of a slot corner, strong safety hybrid role. He's tackling so much better than he ever has. Uh, So that is sort of working out another Bill O'Brien move. I still think he's overpaid for that role, but he's he's playing well. He's been more of a free safety kind of guy. He was a college corner. Um, So kind of finding his role on what is now his third team in as many years. Um, And then Tyrell Adams stepping up at linebacker with Benardrick McKinney out and Jacob Martin is going to make the notes. Uh, He is playing uh, solid as a rotational edge player there. On to one of the more exciting games of the week, the Raiders at Chiefs. Raiders get a big win this week. Uh, I'll get the Derek Carr conversation out of the way. Many Raiders fans will want a boost here. It was not all good for Derek Carr through a bad pick in this game. He's not been... Uh, great for the entirety of the season. I did like the game plan. I like the way he looked pushing the ball downfield. And I will say it right now, if this is the Derek Carr we get moving forward where he is willing to throw the ball downfield and looks that way and throws that ball accurately, he will go up. But for the majority of this season, he has been still that sort of game manager type of guy that doesn't always look deep. So just want to see more. I'm not going to go up quite this week, but Henry Ruggs, the third is going to go up plus 175 to a 76. Uh, This is looking like a great draft pick showing that immediate impact as that Deshaun Jackson type of guy. Uh, But even beyond that, he is elevating for double covered catches. Love to see it. Uh, He looks like a instant upgrade to this offense. Uh, And then you have Jason Witten continues to play well. I'm just going to say that and move on. Uh, Colton Miller, the left tackle, first round pick a couple years ago. He has had a nice development track. Uh, Frankly, he has actually been a better pass protector now uh, this season than Mike McGlinchey. Uh, That was looking like the Raiders missed out on Mike McGlinchey in that coin toss deal where you had Gruden and Shanahan doing the coin toss for who would pick first. Uh, And the Raiders lost out, probably wanted Mike McGlinchey. Uh, But so far, Colton Miller actually outperforming as a pass protector. Uh, And then Claylin Furl, Raiders fans, very happy to see him playing like this. He was the fourth overall pick. And what is super promising here is, you know, he's been a very good run defender. We we all acknowledge that, but they spent, again, the fourth overall pick on him. You got to be more than a run defending big body edge player if you're going to pay off that value. And he had, by a country effing mile, the best game as a pass rusher he's ever had. I want to say it was nine pressures, was just all over Patrick Mahomes in this game. Uh, So you'll love to see that. I don't know if that'll be a mainstay, but it's good to see that that's in there. You know, he doesn't quite have the burst and athletic traits to do that at a consistently high level, but I will say that was an impressive performance, kind of manhandling Eric Fisher in this game. Uh, Kendall Vickers is getting in the rotation as a run defender, so he's going up. Nick Kwiatkowski, a big free agent signing for this team. Uh, He has been kind of all over the field. He's been a good run defender. He's actually been really nice in coverage as well. Uh, Looking like a good signing there on the defensive side of the ball who... You know, they don't have all of the talent in the world, but they're tackling pretty well. They're playing discipline. They're, they're, I would say, playing about as good as they can uh, and getting some guys to step up in the, in the meantime. Uh, and then for the Chiefs, I'm actually going to lower Patrick Mahomes out of the 99 club. Two weeks ago, we raised him, and he's had seven turnover-worthy plays in the last two weeks since he got raised. Um, he was... You know, not the reason the Chiefs lost this game, but he shut down in the second half, was not sharp, was making mistakes. I don't know if Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL right now. I think Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers are certainly outplaying him this year, 
and he's they've got less to work with. So um, Patrick Mahomes is going to come down, and then Rashad Fenton continues his hot track. What a find this was. They've kind of got some some like depth at corner all of a sudden for the Chiefs because Rashad Breland's going to go up this week as well. Both these guys played really well. Uh, it was Shaverius Ward uh, that struggled a little bit in this game, but I do like Ward as well. Uh, so I like the uh, the players at corner here. Uh, you know, they they did give up a lot of points this week, but these corners actually uh, held their own on the outside, um, other than a couple plays that Henry Ruggs uh, beat Severus Ward on. But anyway, uh, the are there are going to be some guys going down on this defense that is absolutely struggling. Frank Clark, after going up. Uh, week one against the Texans has disappeared off the face of the planet. Uh, I don't know if Frank Clark will be around here much longer. I think as soon as they can get rid of that $20 million cap hit, they would like to. He has been much below replacement level this year. You could probably find players off the street that can do what Frank Clark is doing for the Chiefs this year. And then you have Tyron Matthew. He's going to go down as well, 87 to an 86, was just rated a little bit too high. He's struggling in coverage this season. Has uh, not been the impact he was on this defense last year. And then Ben Neiman at linebackers. Chiefs fans have been calling for this for a couple weeks, and he is going to go down. He does not look like a starting caliber player out there. Some of the lack of physical traits certainly revealing itself. And he's not a very physical player either. So uh, he is going to go down 368 to a 65. Then we have the Cardinals Jets game. This one uh, was not the most entertaining game to watch, but DJ Humphreys has certainly stepped up at left tackle. Uh, he had an excellent game, granted, against a pretty bad Jets pass rush, but going to get some cred there after getting the contract extension this offseason, uh, paying up to it a little bit. Mason Cole has taken the center job. He's doing pretty well at center. You know, if the Jets have anything, it is a capable interior defensive line on this defense, and Mason Cole doing his job to hold his own. Uh, so solidifying some things with these young offensive linemen here for Arizona. Um, and then some movement for the running backs. Chase Edmonds going up one, showing some nice bursts, some explosiveness. Kenyon Drake going down again. Uh, he is certainly cold, not showing the best vision, not showing the, the elusiveness, ability to avoid tackles, uh, and just not contributing at the level that he did last year. So the gap between these running backs certainly closing. DeAndre Hopkins going to go up. He is now the number one receiver uh, clear cut on my roster. Julio was tied for him at 94. Uh, so Hopkins going to go up to 95. Just has been so steady for this offense. That has clicked from the get-go. I think it's only going to get better too. And then on the defense, Patrick Peterson continues to decline. He is on the other side of 30. Just has not been the same guy for years now. Still a quality corner, but just not the old uh, P2 that we are used to. Uh, and then on the Jets side of the ball, going to be all defense here. Did think about raising some of these guys on the offensive line uh, from the center, McGovern, to the right guard. Uh, names escaped me right now as a free agent signing. And then Chuma Adoga at right tackle. Um, all these guys had a good game this week. That said, they've been pretty bad this year. But uh, definitely the best protection that they've put up on the right side of the line. Uh, so... A thought of raising them, but they didn't get anything because the Cardinals' pass rush is doo doo. Uh, but some guys on the defense going up Neville Hewitt stepping up at linebacker, not much to really say there. And then John Franklin Myers plus one, he's been a nice find for them. Uh, came in here last year, was a part of a hefty rotation. He's been one of their best interior rushers this year, so he's going to go up plus 169 to a 70. And then Bradley McDougald, who they acquired for Jamal Adams, they were certainly hoping he could make a larger impact than he is as that sort of versatile safety here in this scheme, trying to replace Jamal Adams, and he has failed miserably. Just does not have the athletic traits to play that role, and it is showing. Uh, he has been abused in coverage, and he's going to go down for it. I will say Ashton Davis uh, nearly tripled his snap counts on the season this week. Got in there for 22 snaps. A safety out of California that I really like. I think we are not far from seeing Davis take that full starting role from McDougald and could be due for a boost in the near future. All right, Eagles at Stillers. For the Eagles, Travis Fulgham obviously going to go up, uh, taking receiver Twitter by storm uh, with his physicality and sheer target volume. 
He's just a good, physical, tough receiver. It's reminiscent to me of Alan Lazard's breakout last year as a guy that was a free pickup for the Eagles, similar to Lazard for the Packers. Uh, he's climbed his way up the depth chart, and he has earned the trust of the quarterback as the guy that is going to come down with the football, <laughs> uh, which has been a problem here for the Eagles. But he's got steady hands. He's physical, tough. You know, not the best athlete, not going to separate at the highest level, doesn't have the highest ceiling, but has certainly solidified this receiving core a little bit in a time of need. And at the same time, Carson Wentz playing so much better. He fell rapidly to start the year, but over the last six, seven quarters of football, he has been much, much better, looking much more like his old self. He's a flawed quarterback. He's not the best decision maker, not the, you know, doesn't get rid of the ball. Uh, the, as quick as you would like all the time but man he can make some special plays he was really nice in this game uh, was really close to coming in here throwing a Fulgham and Greg Ward and a, a banged up Zach Ertz that we already talked about or not even a banged up just a washed up Zach Ertz uh, Dallas Goddard out and he was really close to coming in here and beating a really good Steelers team uh, so he's going to go up he looks much better and then Jordan Maialata is stepping up at left tackle pleasant surprise for the Eagles here uh, when they had all those offensive line injuries it was looking uh, really really grim but Jordan Mailata seventh round pick a guy that's never really played football but a freak athlete looks serviceable he's not been perfect but certainly uh, someone worth noting here Jason Kelsey on the other hand is struggling at center I will say they've played some of the best interior defensive lines in the league so it could just be a matter of matchups uh, but at the same time, rated as one of the top centers in the league, he should not be losing those matchups as much as he is. So he's going to go down one and could be due to go down more if he continues to play poor against worse interior D lines. Obviously, the Steelers, very competent group. Uh, we talked about Zach Ertz. And then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, I guess I will note first that Miles Sanders, his overall is not going to change here, but I did have to increase that speed by one, showing that getaway speed was really impressive. Uh, but yeah, on the defensive side of the ball, Duke Riley, I still don't really believe in him. I don't think he's a particularly good player, but he did have a good game this week. He's an athletically gifted player, so uh, there could be something there. Probably not, but maybe. Darius Slay, also going to go down. He just hasn't been a superstar corner. He, he hasn't been bad by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, not really fitting the billing as a top five, top ten corner. He's, he's been fine, but he's been able to get had this year. I'll just say that. Uh, and then Nate Gary down too as well. It does not look like a player that should be on the field much longer for the Eagles. He has been uh, the point of focus for opposing offenses to go after. And then just to note, Fletcher Cox, I know he's been kind of in and out dealing with some injury stuff, so I don't want to overreact, but he has just not been uh, a premier interior rusher this year at all, or frankly, a run defender either. So getting up there in age, could Fletcher Cox be past his prime? Uh, we'll definitely monitor it as the season goes on. And then for the Steelers, we talked about Chase Claypool, the star of the week. Wide receiver Ray Ray McLeod, if you even want to call him a receiver. He's more of a gadget player, but showing the great uh, explosiveness with the ball in his hands. He's going to go up one. Kevin Dotson, a guy that wasn't even on my draft board, and then the Steelers took him. And I'm like, ah, crap. I must have missed him because when the Steelers draft an offensive lineman, you take note. And Kevin Dotson is pass blocking at a very high level right out the gate as a rookie guard uh, stepping in for some injuries there and looks like a guy that could be a long-term answer at guard uh, just another you know steal for the Steelers um, and then just some notes the other offensive linemen that you would expect to be the mainstays here have actually not been all that good so you get to Castro uh, he's been dealing with some injuries he has not been the elite guard that he's been in years past Pouncey at center has certainly not been you know even above average he's been really not all that great and then Matt Filer converting from tackle to guard. I never really understood this. He's been a really sound tackle, especially last year. He's been hit or miss at guard. I, I don't know. I, I never really understood why they wanted to move him from tackle to guard. I, I could see a, a world where they put him back at tackle, put Dotson in there at left guard, DeCastro gets there at right guard, and all of a sudden you could be looking at a pretty nasty offensive line. Uh, we'll see what the Steelers do. They're a smart team. I trust their evaluations there, but certainly something to consider there if you're Pittsburgh, I think. Uh, and then Joe Hayden is going to drop down two. Just looking a little older. He can be had this year at corner. He's going to go down. All right, on to the next game here. The Rams at Washington football team. 
We've talked about the young, unexpected players stepping up for the Rams, and it's going to be in the secondary this week. The offense was the offense this week, but the defense, you're continuing to get contributions from Jordan Fuller at free safety, who was a great pick. You know, he's not a great athlete. I don't see him as a very high upside player, but the Rams have scattered playmakers here. You've got Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald, even Darius Williams here has been a playmaker. So it's nice to have that true you know, meaning of the word safety in Jordan Fuller. He's not going to gamble too much. He's going to keep his lane. He's not going to give up the big plays. And when you do that, you're going to extend drives. You're going to increase the opportunity for an Aaron Donald strip sack, for a Darius Williams baited pick, for a Jalen Ramsey Moss interception. You know what I mean? So Jordan Fuller is really a nice fit here as sort of this steady, you know, solid safety. I don't think he'll ever be a superstar. He's just not very fast. He doesn't have that ranginess that you really want, um, but a steady free safety nonetheless. And in addition to that, he's tackling very well. Uh, so you like what you see from Jordan Fuller. And then Darius Williams, we just mentioned, he's been a playmaker at corner. He's five foot nine, but he plays outside. I don't know what his contract situation is. I should look that up for the next one because I think he's inevitably going to go up again with how well he's playing. Um, but could be a guy that uh, is in his contract year. I know he's been around here in and out of the practice squad, uh, but an impressive season nonetheless for Darius Williams. And then on the Washington side of the ball, it's going to be all defense here. The offense continues to be miserable. Not much to really take away other than the offensive line being so bad and the playmakers being so bad, uh, but they're already rated as such. So nothing to really change there. Um, but Montez Sweat is playing well, really playing well in run defense, doing okay as a pass rusher. That play where he chased down, I want to say it was Cam Akers, it might have been Daryl Henderson, but just outrunning fast running backs. It's just insane to see this guy running in a straight line. Um, but it hasn't just been that. He's, he's a huge force and is stepping up this year. Uh, and then Kendall Fuller is going to go up. He has been a great signing. He missed a couple games for injury, uh, but he's been solid in every game that he's played in his return to Washington here. And he's stepping outside. Uh, Kansas City used him as a nickel corner, and he is showing that he is everything that his brother Kyle, or cousin Kyle, I, I don't know what their relation is. I know they're related, um, but he is showing that he's a very similar player. He's not your traditional six foot plus outside perimeter corner, but has the quickness to man guys up, has zone instincts, good ball skills. Uh, so Kendall Fuller, plus 180 to an 81. Looking like a great signing. Uh, I think it was a three-year, $30 million contract. That is a great value for a high-level starting corner. Uh, and then opposite of that, Ronald Darby as well, coming over from Philadelphia. He was a former star corner, Ronald Darby, and he is playing much more like that level. So this combination of Darby and Fuller with a good pass rush in front of them with sweat and you know, Chase Young wasn't all that good in this game. I think he's he's not 100% yet. Um, but this defense has so much potential. Uh, to get these corners to play like that is a big deal because, honestly, that was looking like a weakness coming into the season. Um, but uh, at, the, at the same time, Ryan Kerrigan, uh, he won NFC Defensive Player of the Week like a couple weeks ago and has basically disappeared since. His pass rush snaps are decreasing. He's not getting after the quarterback. I don't even know if there's much of a trade value for Ryan Kerrigan at this point. Uh, looks like an absolute shell of what he used to be. All right, on we go to the upset of the week. The Dolphins uh, taking down the San Francisco 49ers. So this is going to start with, I'm going to say wide receiver Mike Kosicki. He's playing 87.4% of his snaps as a receiver, only 12.6% at tight end. Uh, you know, he's that slot gadget player. Uh, oversized slot guy that'll occasionally put his hand in the dirt and play tight end when he does. He's a miserable blocker, but he is a mismatch problem nonetheless. Uh, gets matched up on undersized slot corners, uh, two slow linebackers, and he looks awesome. So plus one, 74 to a 75, looking like a weapon for years to come with all of those physical traits coming out of Penn State. It was just a freak. And then also Adam Shaheen, the real tight end here, uh, blocking very well. He's found a nice role here. The Bears obviously overdrafted him, but he is a massive dude. 
And the fact that he's blocking well is big for him because that was always going to be a path for him to have success because I don't think he was ever going to be this mismatch problem at tight end that the Bears hoped he would be. He just isn't fast enough, but he has not been this type of blocker in his career. So that is certainly encouraging and looking like a good trade for Miami to bring him in and get him to show some toughness at that big frame that he has. And then you have Robert Hunt. He is stepping up at right tackle. I still think he's far from proven to be a starting caliber right tackle. I still question his foot speed and how he would handle speed. I'd wonder how he would look if he had to go against, say, D. Ford in this matchup, as opposed to bigger bodied guys like Arik Armstead and um, Kerry Hyder. Uh, good matchup for Hunt. But uh, anyway, he's going to go up one, look serviceable. And then these outside backers are going to have some movement on the defense. I, I do need to mention that Preston Williams. Came very close to getting a boost this week, but I uh, was reminded that I do really like Preston Williams. He's rated nicely as a 72, but had his first great game of the season uh, between Williams and Parker and Gasicki and a potentially improved offensive line. I would say we're getting closer and closer to Tua here. We're, we're basically a bad uh, Fitzpatrick start away from them deciding um, to go to Tua, but this was not a bad Fitzpatrick start. This was a great Fitzpatrick start. Uh, but anyway, on the defense, the outside backers, Andrew Van Ginkle stepping up, literally following the path of Vince Beagle, who was a no-name pickup. Van Ginkle, I want to say, was an undrafted free agent here. Uh, if not that, like a fifth or sixth round pick. But anyway, uh, Wisconsin hybrid linebackers and the Belichick defense. There's no more dynamic duo. And, Van, you know, Andrew Van Ginkle did the same thing at Wisconsin. A little bit of rush in the passer, a little bit of covers, a little bit of run defense, a little bit of everything as this perfect, perfectly average, nice hybrid linebacker is filling right into the shoes of Vince Beagle, who is Wisconsin linebacker done for the season here. Uh, Kamu Grugier Hill, a little bit of a different role, playing more of a coverage spot here, playing some slot corner, some outside linebacker, middle linebacker, and you know your occasional edge outside backer in this hybrid defense. But uh, he is a phenomenal athlete who uh, I, I was surprised to see Philadelphia let him go because he's he can play. He can cover. I like Kamu Grugier Hill. He's played pretty well here for Miami. On the other hand, Kyle Van Noy has struggled. They gave him a ton of money. He's looking lost in coverage. He's not defending the run as well. He's not rushing the passer as well. I'm sure he'll have his good games moving forward, but he was rated very nicely coming off of a really nice year in New England, and he has been far from that high-end impact that he was last season, so he's got to come down. Uh, and then Xavier Howard as well, getting a note here. He's been really nice uh, when he's been out there this year. So a little bit less to talk about on the Niners side, but Raheem Mostert continues to impress. Man, the explosiveness. He's making guys miss. Uh, enough said on that. He has been a star this year. Unlike Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback, I know he's dealing with an ankle injury, and I'm going to call him out right now. He's just got to play better, and I honestly think he will play better against the Rams, but that does not mean that his play doesn't warrant <laughs> a reduction here rough week probably the worst start of any quarterback this year honestly he did get benched in this game and it wasn't just the ankle injury I do think that that was impacting his ability to drive the ball and put some extra umph on the ball led to some inaccurate throws but it was bad decisions as well uh, so Jimmy's got to get healthy but he's also just got to play much better he is going to come down uh, for the first time it's looking like Jimmy is on the hot seat at quarterback and then these under-the-radar defensive linemen continue to step up as San Francisco works out these injuries and departures of guys on this defensive line. So Kevin Givens, an undrafted pickup out of Penn State, stepping up on the interior in run defense as a rotational player. Uh, he's been going up steadily throughout the season. Looks like a nice find for them. And then Kerry Hyder as well. I've said this before, I'll say it again, he is exactly what they wanted from Solomon Thomas on this defense, that bigger bodied Seattle three defensive end uh, who can step inside, rush the passer from an ins from the inside. He is honestly doing everything. He has been, uh, I would say, just short of, of uh, Fred Warner, this team's best defensive player. He's been all over the field uh, as much as you can be for a defensive end. Really nice find, Kerry Hyder finding a scheme fit that, frankly, is best suited for his skill set as this weird tweener type of player. Uh, so good for San Francisco to find him. 
Next up, we have the Colts-Browns game. Phillip Rivers is going to go down. Anyone with a pair of eyeballs can explain that one. He just is not good. He just isn't. He doesn't have the physical traits to play quarterback at a high level right now. He can still process a defense. He can still sort of pick apart stuff in the short to intermediate game, but defenses are daring him to beat them with his arm and he can't do it. He can't consistently push the ball downfield. He will press when he gets under pressure and make bad decisions. I just don't like where this is going with Phillip Rivers and it's hurting their run game as well. Jonathan Taylor has just been flooded at the line of scrimmage as defenses are like, yeah, we're not really scared of Phillip Rivers. So it's just not really working out here. Uh, I'm not particularly impressed. He's going to come down uh, but Marcus Johnson, uh, he comes back here to, Phil uh, to uh, Indianapolis. I think he's been in Philadelphia. Um, but anyway, he's going to go up too. He's catching some balls, whatever. Uh, looking like a decent outside receiver. I don't think he's a part of the long-term plan. Uh, let's talk to, about the much more exciting Browns here. Uh, the offense pretty much was the offense this week. Baker's had some ups and downs. Uh, we know they're going to run the ball at a high level. They're all rated as such. But uh, as for the defense, Ronnie Harrison... I've been tough on Ronnie Harrison, but he made a really nice pick six in this game. Uh, a lot of it was on Phillip Rivers, but uh, Harrison's, you know, it wasn't just that play. He looks like a fit here. And I will also mention Sheldrick Redwine. I've been wondering why they are not playing him over Andrew Sandeo. I like Sheldrick Redwine. I thought he was a good pick out of Miami. I wouldn't be surprised if Redwine and Harrison became a decent developmental free safety, strong safety combination here. Uh, they are waiting on Grant Delpit to get back next year, but uh, to me, that is the way to go, especially with Carl Joseph out of the lineup right now. Uh, and then I will mention Denzel Ward has struggled as well. I expect better things of him. He could be due for a decrease if he doesn't turn this around fast. Uh, and then in the front seven, you have Miles Garrett's going to go up. He is having a anyone not named... Aaron Donald, Defensive Player of the Year type of season. <laughs> he looks great. And then Malcolm Smith. Uh, we're familiar with him. Super Bowl MVP. He's bounced around the league. He is starting at linebacker here and looking a little bit more like his old self as a capable kind of do-it-all three-down linebacker. All right, so the next game here is going to be the Giants-Cowboys game. A little bit of movement for the Giants. Darius Slayton, the only receiver here that wants to make a play. He continues his climb. I like Darius Slayton a lot. And then James Bradbury, definitely proving me wrong. I did not think James Bradbury would come into a team with a bad pass rush and play even as a good corner, let alone a great corner. He has been such a great scheme fit. He is tough. He can press uh, and is really heady out there as a corner. Doesn't get beat a whole lot despite not being a great athlete. So uh, I like what I'm seeing from James Bradbury. Uh, and then let's flip over to the Cowboys side of the ball. These receivers are going to go up. C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, uh, the tape speaks for itself on that one. I don't think anyone will argue that. Michael Gallup, a huge reason with Andy Dalton why they were able to win that game in the end. Some incredible plays. He's been great. C.D. Lamb was great in this game. Amari Cooper was not great in this game, but he's been fine. Uh, but uh, I thought about lowering Cooper, to be honest. Uh, Connor Williams. Certainly something the, the Cowboys want to see is some of these offensive linemen figure it out. This offensive line has not been very good this year, but Connor Williams, I got to applaud the Cowboys. They've been very patient with him as an undersized tackle converting to guard. He's been outmatched uh, up until this season as a pass protector, but he's really stepping up this year at that left guard spot. So you like to see that. And then Terrence Steele was serviceable, uh, granted against a pretty bad pass rush for the Giants, but uh, he is stabilizing a little bit at tackle. Uh, he's been forced to play because of some injuries. Uh, and then Alden Smith is going to go up plus two on the defensive side of the ball, 77 to a 79, uh, continuing his fast ascension here. He, simply put, looks like Alden Smith. He had, I think, nine pressures and a sack in this game. Again, granted against some bad line play for the Giants. Uh, big game this week, Alden Smith. Uh, he has got to do a good job with uh, Lawrence, who stepped up this week, getting after Kyler Murray uh, against a pretty bad Cardinals offensive line. And then Jalen Smith as well was much better this week. We lowered Lawrence and Smith last week. They've been bad all season, but uh, this week they did step up after we called them out. Uh, so moving on to the next game here, the Vikings Seahawks. 
It's going to be all defense for the Vikings. I thought the Vikings offense looked almost exactly uh, as I expected. Some explosive plays, some good running. Adam Thielen doing his thing and Kirk Cousins doing his thing, making some plays and then also leading into some bad plays. Uh, But let's talk about this defense. Jeff Gladney is coming into his own as a slot corner here for the Vikings. First round pick for the Vikes. Uh, it's It's a complicated Zimmer scheme. Uh, But Gladney is picking it up pretty quickly here. He's been much better over the last couple of weeks. So he's going to go up. Anthony Harris at safety is actually struggling, playing on that franchise tag, trying to get that contract extension, and uh, looking like potentially a good idea for the Vikings not to give him a big contract. Uh, Potentially a guy that has uh, flashed a little bit too much and is not maybe the player we thought he was. Uh, as a kind of breakout safety over the last couple years that pretty much came out of nowhere. Uh, And then just some notes, James Lynch is an interesting defensive tackle at a position that this team desperately needs someone to step up. He only got in there for eight reps this week. I want to see more of him. He only got, uh, or he did get a sack this week. So I do like him as a productive edge player at Baylor, making the conversion to interior in the NFL. And then Eric Wilson, Uh, He's had to step up at linebacker with Anthony Barr out for the season, and he finally did it this week. He's struggled all year, uh, but I I did like what I saw from Eric Wilson this week. Uh, So let's see if he is just a polarizing player or if he's actually a a starting caliber guy. Uh, And then for the Seahawks, this offense continues to dominate. Uh, I don't like this narrative that Russ is simply carrying this team. Obviously, Russ has been incredible. I think... Uh, Either way you slice it, you're looking at a 51-49% split between Rodgers and Russ for the MVP. Uh, But when people bring that up, they say that Russ is carrying a bad Seahawks team that would be miserable without him. I think two years ago, that's absolutely true. I don't think that's true this year. You have DK Metcalf playing uh, as one of the best receivers in the NFL this year. He's the perfect fit as well with Russell's sort of heroic football style where he's going to run around and just launch the ball deep. I can't think of a receiver I'd rather have than DK Metcalf for that style. So he's been awesome. Uh, And then the offensive line has been way better than people want to give it credit for. It's been at worst an average offensive line, most likely an above average line and uh, quite possibly a a top 12-ish line. Uh, So uh, you've got Brandon Shell has been a great uh, acquisition at right tackle, Damian Lewis at right guard. Now, he continues to be what he was at LSU, I will admit. He has not been a great pass protector, if you want to throw that into the Russ MVP conversation. Um, But what he's offering as a run blocker is clearing ways for what's been a decent run game this year for Seattle as well. And then Ethan Pochick has been locked down at center. Uh, So a lot of guys on this offense continuing their rise. Uh, and K.J. Wright as well, continuing his rise. He has been outstanding, having a rejuvenation this year uh, as the Robin to Bobby Wagner's Batman, who's been great as well. K.J. Wright was awesome in coverage the last two weeks, so good for K.J. And then uh, Jonathan Bullard, an interesting interior defensive lineman pickup, an undersized interior defensive lineman, uh, playing a pass-rushing role here for Seattle. I think they're hoping that Uh, as LJ Collier has not really been what they were hoping. Um, Maybe Jonathan Bullard can give them what Quentin Jefferson gave them as an explosive three tech as a pass rusher. Uh, So there's your Seahawks and just a couple of games remaining here. So the Chargers, it's just going to be Justin Herbert, which would show you that he's doing a really good job despite the fact that the rest of this team is not. I will say Mike Williams was great in this game. Uh, Keenan Allen before he left this game was great, Uh, but for the most part, the offensive line has not been very good here. Herbert's been running around a lot. Uh, What's impressed me the most about him, I would say, is his accuracy and his comfortability and willingness to extend plays that, uh, frankly, behind an elite offensive line at Oregon, he didn't have to show. Uh, So that's where he's impressed me the most. Uh, He has not been perfect, but he has certainly been uh, above expectations here. So Justin Herbert continuing his rise. And then just some notes on the defense. Nasir Adderley got the start this week and was fine. A player with a lot of expectations here that just hasn't uh, worked out yet. And then Uchenna Inwosu has just been incredibly steady this year as that versatile defensive end outside linebacker. He's made some plays when he drops into coverage. He's rushing the passer. He's playing run defense. Just a great rotational piece for them. Uh, And then for the Saints... Marquez Callaway just going to go up plus two. He's getting on the field. He's been fine when they throw him the ball, so he's going to get some respect. 
And then for the defense, David Onyemata. He's been their best interior defensive lineman. Uh, he's even getting after the passer a little bit, being a good run defender. Shy Tuttle as well, a guy that broke out last year as an undrafted pickup, I believe, out of Tennessee. Uh, so he's been a good run defender in the rotation, could be going up. Uh, he just doesn't get a lot of playing time. Uh, but for the secondary, this has been one of the surprise of, uh, surprises of the season. Uh, if you ask me coming into the year to rank your top corner free safety duos in the league, I would have said Lattimore and Marcus Williams would have been one of the top ones for sure, and uh, they have been one of the worst this season. Lattimore is playing awful football right now. Uh, He's been, at best, a a league average corner. We know he's better than that. He probably will be better than that in the future, but is just maybe in his own head right now. I don't know. He's struggling a lot. Uh, And then Marcus Williams as well. It's a guy in a contract year trying to show the rest of the league as the Saints probably can't afford him, although the Saints seem to afford everybody, so I don't know for sure. Um, But Williams trying to show off in a contract year that he is one of the league's top free safeties as he's been over the last few years. And man, is he disappointing right now. This Saints off uh, the Saints defense that's giving up a ton of deep passes, and it almost always feels like Marcus Williams is out of position, which is very uncharacteristic for him. But he is going to go down. Uh, and then we just have uh, one last game here: the Bills Titans Tuesday night football game. The reason studs and duds is here on uh, Saturday this week. Everything got pushed back. But anyway, just a couple of guys going down for the Bills. Ed Oliver, dude what the hell? Where did you go? He, he, we boosted him after week two. And then in the last three weeks, he has one pressure, isn't stopping the run, and is just doing nothing. He's been awful up front. He's been a liability straight up for this defense. I'm starting to get worried about Ed Oliver. I knew he was going to be a bit of a project. Now he's in year two here. But there just hasn't been a lot of development here for Ed Oliver. He'll show some flashes, he'll get you excited, and then he just disappears. So I'm officially worried about Ed Oliver that he could be more Solomon Thomas than Aaron Donald. Um, That's certainly the way it's leaning right now. He's a similar type of player as that um, undersized, uber-athletic interior presence. Uh, Could just be that they're not using him correctly as well. You know, it's not like the Rams put Aaron Donald as a nose tackle a whole lot. They try to get him, um, you know, in the right matchups where he can use some space a little better. I I don't know for sure. I would need to do a deeper uh, film analysis on it, but I want to see Ed Oliver succeed. It just is not happening. (laughs) And then um, we have uh, Derrick Henry's son here, Josh Norman, is going to go down one. You know, it's not just the stiff arm. It doesn't help, but, uh, you know, Norman had a really bad week in coverage. Uh, They definitely went at him, and he did not respond well. So Josh Norman, the veteran, going to go down. Uh, So the Bills' defense, certainly a concern so far this season. And then for the Titans, Ryan Tannehill is going to go up. Titans fans are going to love to see that. Uh, When he is on, it's it's really special. I mean, what he had with A.J. Brown in this game was just sharp, consistent, steady, impossible to stop. Uh, He is doing a good job with his feet as well, making plays on the move. I think Tannehill is certainly coming into his own, and I am opening my mind to the fact that Tannehill uh, could be better than these Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff types of guys, Uh, and it could just be that he was really held back from Adam Gase in a bad surrounding unit, and now uh, you know, a guy that played receiver in college is really coming into his own. He's got physical traits. He's got the uh, character, the energy, the football IQ. Uh, I'm starting to buy more and more into Ryan Tannehill in that last year was not a fluke. And uh, I'm, I'm getting there, Titans fans. I'm getting there. Just give me a little bit of time. I don't, you know, I need, I need large sample sizes before I put him as high as you want me to put him as this top 10 quarterback. Uh, but he's getting there. He certainly is. And then A.J. Brown was awesome. You know, him and Metcalf are so different. Brown is uh, so tough over the middle of the field, whereas Metcalf, uh, obviously drawing the comparison here because they were teammates at Ole Miss. Um, both these guys somehow fell into the second round. I thought they both should have been first rounders. Uh, but yeah, A.J. Brown, a great fit for this scheme that utilizes crossing routes really well. Uh, and he is just really tough after the catch. He's just so hard to run with in the way that they use him. And he's so physical. I, I'm a huge believer in A.J. Brown. Uh, and then Jeff Swaim. Um, former Cowboys tight end showing up here out of nowhere in Tennessee, run blocking at a good level. 
uh, being sort of that blocking guy as Jonu Smith goes out there and makes plays at tight end. So there is your week five studs and duds. Again, guys, please do hit that like button. Please do share the video. I don't think this video is going to do as well as it normally does being on a Saturday here. So I would appreciate uh, if you guys could help out in those departments. Uh, Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you think I forgot anyone, I will see you there. Cheers, guys. Enjoy football tomorrow. Peace out.